This is Brent with Lycans Motorsports coming to you with another video. Um, this, this video is going to be uh, part one of a several part series of assembling a 496 cubic inch FE. If, uh, if you look at the video history, you will see that I have already uh, assembled the cylinder heads. They are trick flow cylinder heads that have been ported for this particular build. And for this video, I just wanted to outline uh, the block and the foundation for, for the build. So this is a bare blocks, bare block motors, BBM, uh, cast iron, FE block. Uh, in my opinion, the best cast iron block that's available on the market right now. Uh, extremely strong, gusseted um, lifter valley priority main oiling just like um, the factory side oilers got the main um, oil passage that runs the length of the galley runs the length of the block and then each individual main bearing is fed this one is currently uh, a 4 3 10 bore that'll be the bore size for this block and for this build uh, it's been line honed it's been square decked on a bhj fixture and bored and honed with torque plates um, every block gets that same treatment these are no different i've never seen any aftermarket block whether it be dart or world or bbm or shelby or any of them not need the full gamut of machine work and that full gamut of machine work is necessary for your the foundation of your build if the block is not square and true and the cylinders are not round and straight then you will not have the foundation for the rest of your build so um kind of got the idea to do this a little bit late uh, the camshaft is already in um, it's one of my custom hydraulic rollers uh, ground for me by comp cams um, got a new steel uh, cam thrust plate these uh, are notoriously thick and I usually have to surface grind these I keep a stash of them uh, we put on a surface grinder and cut uh, probably five or six thousandths off of those to, in, uh, to have the necessary cam thrust clearance uh, ARP cam bolt and um, new thrust plate fasteners if you remember the old fe factory fe bolts these were a phillips head and it was very hard to, to put those in correctly without stripping those out so these are new bolts um these this bolt has been shortened to five eighths so that it doesn't interfere with the uh the oil passage uh, that feeds the distributor and that's very critical as well haven't seen any brand new bolts that are the correct length so that's something that you need to check when you're putting an engine together um can't really see from here but uh th these blocks take um an aftermarket cam bearing set it's not the normal um f33 durabond set it's an fp01 much wider uh than the normal cam bearings and what I do is uh, I use a traditional um, F33 front bearing. If not, then the distributor gear contacts the bearing. You have to do a lot of grinding and a lot of cutting, and it's just not worth it. So I'm going to spin this over. This block's already been... Um, obviously washed and cleaned and what I do is I block off the passages um, and after it's jet washed I run some pressure fed lacquer thinner pump some through the ga galleries to make sure everything's clean and uh, it's a noticeable difference when you do that you'll see a little bit of um, dirty lacquer thinner come out at first but afterwards you know that uh, it's clean even after the bores have been scrubbed uh, with a brush there's still some stuff that's left over that needs to be cleaned out that's how i usually do it um arp main studs billet caps which are cross bolted 
really stout combination. Everything fits tight. There's the caps are doweled. I've got coated uh, Clevite main bearings in this one. These are Cleveland bearings. Uh, this block can either use FE bearings or Cleveland bearings. If you see, it's got the the grooves for for each one. I've I've uh, put Cleveland bearings in this one. I've got the number two main cap still on here because um, I have to check the number two main bearing clearance when um, when I get the crank polished. It was just a little bit uh, uh, the bearing clearance just wasn't what I needed. The tolerance has said stacked up against me, and um, I needed to polish three or four tenths off of that number two main journal on the crank. So I've got that cap still on there so I can recheck the clearance when, when I get the crank polished. But um, just a really solid build, um, been painted with uh, VHT ceramic uh, satin black engine paint. This one's going in a Shelby Cobra replica and I expect it to make just a little bit north of 600 horsepower. Should be plenty enough to uh, put that car in the ditch for him. Um, the crank's going to be a steel scat four and a quarter stroke. I'm using some K1 6700 rods with some diamond pistons. This is the, the piston rod combination. K1 makes a really nice rod, uh, really light for this uh, size rod, much lighter than most of the other brands that you see. Got some coated. Clevite rod bearings in there and diamond piston dish. It's got 043, 043, three millimeter ring pack. It's got a Napier second, second ring, steel top ring. Pretty light for the size, 492 grams. Nice piece. So, uh, this week I should be able to um, get the crank in it, get the pistons and the rods in it, and I'll do a video with all of that and, and maybe highlight some, some build procedures as we go, some different techniques that I use on the FEs. Uh, FEs are 99% of, of what I do. I do a lot of them, and um, I've learned a lot along the way that maybe I can share with share with you guys so if uh i encourage you to hit the subscribe button and um i'm going to post a lot more videos in the future and you don't want to miss out on those so thanks for watching have a good day